We are here joining in this holy sacrifice of the Mass as a community. And I ask you to offer your prayers for Father <coughs> IJ for his profession of his final vows. We ask the intercession of the Blessed Mother and of Saint Stanislaw Kostka. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most previous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. from the second letter of St. Peter. May grace and peace be yours in abundance in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything needed for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Thus he has given us through these things 
His precious and very great promises, so that through them you may escape from the corruption that is in the world because of lust, and may become participants of divine nature. Therefore, brothers and sisters, be all the more eager to confirm your call and election. For if you do this, you will never stumble. For in this way, entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be richly provided for you. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to you. Glory to you, Lord. Now every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended, they started to return. The boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. And they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you with great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? You did not know that I must be in my father's house. But they did not understand what he said to them. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> In his letter of recommendation, Peter Canisius, the provincial of Germany at that time, wrote, Stanislaus, a noble son of Poland, a young man who is upright and full of zeal, was tested for a short time in the boarding house of Dillingen and was shown to be always diligent in fulfilling his duty and firm in his vocation. We expect great things from him. Of this brief and insightful description of Stanislaus Koska, I would pick out always diligent in fulfilling his duty as the quality that could very well describe IJ. I say this not only because of the responsibilities that have been entrusted to him, as superior of the Jesuit community of Xavier University, province assistant for the social apostolate, chair of the province commission of ministries and other roles, which I apologize, I can't remember. I say this because when we were scholastics, IJ was the one who never missed nor came up with reasons to miss his Sunday apostolate then. During the course of our Jesuit studies, he always turned in his requirements. Despite being sleepy in class, despite having difficulties writing an essay, despite the obligations that he had as SLB director, despite the incomplete and unreadable notes, despite being unable to photocopy all the readings when it was time to pass the papers, I.J. delivered. There was a time when he doubted whether he can hurdle law school. My response then was to remind him there were many things I doubted, but of this I was very certain. Pare, kahit may references pa yan o wala, nakakasubmit ka pa rin ng final paper. In basketball jargon, a sport which, apart from volleyball, he loved and was good at, IJ was a certified clutch player. In other words, whether it was Manualia, Laborandum, Apostolate Studies, he fulfilled what was expected of him and more. But it was not only in performing his duties that he could be relied upon. IJ, after all these years, has remained as dependable 
and trustworthy as a person, and most especially as a fellow Jesuit. I won't recount all the times when I would say that he has been tried and tested. There are just far too many to share. But allow me to share, with your permission, Aich, a brief anecdote of how his character shows itself indeed. On that morning when I left for studies, IJ called up and asked what time I was leaving. I was staying in San Jose Seminary then, and he was residing in the Jesuit residence. He asked, Pare, gusto mo kape? I replied tangentially, hindi pa ko tapos mag-impake, pare. After 30 minutes, there was a knock on my door, and there was IJ holding a takeaway from Starbucks, asking, Ano pare, kailangan mo ng tulong? Yan ang classic na IJ, John Gonzaga. Our society is indeed equally blessed to embrace in its ranks a man like IJ. In our early life as Jesuit novices, we were socialized to be radically inclusive. We were cautioned against forming particular friendships. That is why our prescribed form of bonding was to go in bands of three. This ideal of being equally friendly with all, which may, say, which may seem strange to some, even now, you know, <laughs> gradually led to an unexpected grace, becoming friends with people you didn't initially expect you'd be friends with. You see, I first met IJ when he was a freshman in Ateneo de Manila University. His name belonged to the roster of ROTC cadets assigned under my command. Back then, I only knew him as Cadet Chan Gonzaga, Flight C, 2nd Squadron, from 1 BS Intel Management. Apart from two years of Saturday ROTC and occasionally crossing paths on campus, the next time I recognized IJ was when he attended a vocation seminar in our Viso house. I must say that I didn't expect to see him there. So you can imagine my even greater surprise when IJ finally entered the novitiate as one of our 12 premi. Some years after, I came to join the formation pace of what remained of that original 12. In theology, it eventually composed an unlikely trinity, IJ, Richard, and myself. You could imagine I was about to say unholy trinity, but <laughs> you could imagine how we eventually got to know each other through classes, study sessions that became siesta sessions, villas, random outings, retreats, the whole gamut of what comprised community life as a scholastic. It was in sharing that journey from the second year of philosophy until ordination that grew the bonds that led me to accept IJ's invitation to share on this occasion. But I have qualms about doing this since I've noticed that in recent past, those who have been preaching at these final vows have been Jesuits who have already taken their own final vows. I don't have the wisdom of experience to pass on, nor could I confidently reassure him that all will be fine, as is want of someone who has been on this path before. I am here to attest to another unexpected grace of being in this least society, not just friendship, but something even stronger, brotherhood. I am here because, through God's grace, IJ has become like a brother to me. There is something about growing up together and watching each other become more comfortable in our own skin. At this point in our life, we have already spent more than half of our lives as Jesuits. 
though we are not now what we were during our early stages of formation, that which we are, we are. IJ may not remember this now. Huddled in the rec room right before we processed for our diaconate ordination, I nervously asked him and Richard Elia, Ito na ba to? Yordin ba talaga tayo? IJ heaved a sigh and gestured. Wala nang atrasan to, pare. A few months later, on the morning of our presbyteral ordination, I bumped into IJ before the ceremonies began and told him, Jay, ikaw makatulog kagabi. He quickly replied, Pucha, ako din. <laughs> and we both burst into nervous laughter. Then as an afterthought, we wondered, Si Richard kaya? Ay, naiming siguro tulog doon. Then we were in stitches again. Today, IJ, it seems that you'll be on your own as you pronounce your final vows. While Richard and I want contemporaneously take this with you, we will, however, vicariously experience this through you. That is why last night, I couldn't sleep again, and I also cannot help but ask in the same spirit as before, totoo na ba to? Magpa-final boss ka ba talaga? In the spirit of conversations long past, let me express in prayer as one brother to another what I hope this vows will mean for you and for all of us experiencing this through you. May this promise remind you of how our lives as Jesuits are never defined by what roles we play and positions we hold. Instead, may it remind you of how your greater availability will allow God to define the life that you have promised to live out. May this promise remind you that what we have received only passes through us. We are not just vessels, but channels. May the life we live out connect other lives to the real inexhaustible source of life. May this promise remind you that you are now in God's hands through this least society of Jesus. May this give you the confidence and the humility to carry out your duties in the service of the church and the people of God. Finally, may this promise allow you to further share the gift of your presence and brotherhood to those who are excluded and have felt misunderstood. May people find in you God's comforting presence in this wounded world. Gathered in joyful hope, we offer our prayers to God who creates hearts to love. For every prayer we pray, Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. For the church, may we live with humility and in holiness, welcoming others with warm hospitality, opening our hearts to the poor, listening to each other, and working together in solidarity. We pray. Lord, hear our prayers. For our world, may our government leaders use their power to serve others and abandon any desire to profit from their positions. May leaders be honest and transparent and uniquely dedicated to strengthening the common good. We pray. Lord, hear our prayers. For an end to prejudice of any kind and for purity in our religious practices, may we not use religion to condemn others but rather walk together as companions, supporting each other with prayer and understanding. We pray. Lord, hear our For an increase in all vocations in the church, and in, particular, in a particular way, vocations to religious life, as we 
pray for a better nurturing of priestly and religious vocations in our families and community. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence and mass killings. May peace and justice replace anger and revenge. For the sick, the dying, and the bereaved and the abandoned. May comfort and compassion bring healing. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In loving memory of our family and friends who have died during the past year, and for all the prayers we offer in silence. We pray. Lord, we pray in a special way for Father I.J., who will soon pronounce his final vows, that the Lord may send him more blessings as he commits himself to the Society of Jesus in faithfulness and obedience to the Lord. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Almighty Father, receive these prayers from a people made one by the Holy Spirit, who always dwells within us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of God's name, for our good and good of God's holy church. Let us pray. As we make sacrificial offerings at your altar, O Lord, give us the spirit of devotion that you instilled in St. Stanislaus, so that we too, with a pure mind and a fervent heart, may be renewed with the bread of angels. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, <coughs> Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For among the members of our society, of whatever grade or position, age or ministry, you have raised up many saints and blessed, allowing us the joy in this life of contemplating even now the holy city, the new Jerusalem, which is our mother. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth, sing a new song in adoration, and we with the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At that time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Praise your death, O Lord, and profess the resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy, and your entire people, your son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the source now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Now, of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Now, of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those invited to the banquet of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be free. I, Ismael Jose III, Villarino Chan Gonzaga, make my profession, and I promise to Almighty God in the presence of his virgin mother, the whole heavenly court, and all those here present, and to you, Reverend Father Mars P. Tan of the Society of Jesus, representing the Superior General of the Society of Jesus and his successors, and holding the place of God, perpetual poverty, chastity, and obedience, and in conformity with it, special care for the instruction of children according to the manner of living contained in the apostolic letters of the Society of Jesus and its constitutions. I further promise a special obedience to the sovereign pontiff in regard to the missions according to the same apostolic letters and the constitutions. At Cagayan de Oro City, in the chapel of the most sacred heart of Jesus, Loyola House, Savior University, Ateneo de Cagayan, on the 13th of November, 2021. Eyes 
For those attending the Holy Mass online, let us pray the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and I unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Teach us, O oh Lord, how as we follow the example of Saint Stanislaus, to advance toward you along a straight path and to seek your strength in a spiritual food. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the Thanksgiving message of Father I. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. Morning. Just a short message of thanks and a reflection, if you don't mind. Um, first, the thanks. Um, thanks, bye. Thanks, Father Mars. Thank you, Father Mars, for graciously saying yes to God when I asked if I could ask the provincial to let Father Mars receive my vows given our situation. Anyways, Father Mars was also my vice superior when I was still a scholastic in the Loyola House of Studies. Thanks, Oj. <laughs> Father Oji, Father Ulysses Caballo, uh, is now assigned in the name of the Davao. Uh, so thank you, bye. Sayang Richard, good and cross. Hello, brother. <laughs> we'll see you soon. <laughs> um, J, thanks for, for coming over and saying yes to preaching this morning. Thank you for, for that. Thank you. thank you for bringing Tony also. So thanks, Ton. <laughs> Um, unahan na kuni mo ba for a long time since ROTC. <laughs> um, thank you, Father, to Father Provincial, Father Jun Biray, to all. Uh, thanks, Father Jun. Thanks to all my brothers of the Philippine province, especially for my community here in Cagayan de Oro. Uh, we're here full force, maintaining social distancing, promise. Um, and thank you to the Universal Society for the trust and confidence through the years. Beyond my own weakness and mistakes, you never wavered in your faith in me, your kindness and brotherly care. Father Mon Bautista accompanied me in my retreat in preparation for today. Maraming salamat, Father. 
to all of you joining us online, our lay partners and collaborators have come to work with and work for, who I was, am privileged to accompany and serve all these years. You inspire me so much, you who I consider friends. Thank you for toiling with us in this great vineyard of the Lord, where we as Jesuits are also just your co-laborers. After all, this is not our enterprise, but God's. Mga kaibigan mula pansol, sa pangpalay, hanggang muntalban, maraming salamat sa tiwala, pagmamahal, at pagkakaibigan. Thank you to all my friends from Tacloban, to Manila, to Makati, to Davao, to Culion, to Indonesia, to Rome, to Bikunon, and to Cagayan. For the friendship, and especially for the love. Thank you to my family, including my loving and beloved extended family watching online from here in CDO, from Manila, especially from those outside the country. Especially Papa, Moy, Achi. Thank you. Let me end by humbly asking, no, for, or humbly begging for your continued prayers. Allow me a personal anecdote. Last September 7, I received an unexpected email from a dear friend, Ms. Joy Fernandez of the Office of the President of Ateneo de Manila. Attached was a March 2008 Wind Hoover edition. Where they printed... <clears throat> where they printed my mom's talk to me as I moved to theology. So right before preparing for my, it was a few, just a few weeks after Father Provincial called me up that I was being called to final vows. And this just came out of nowhere. I remember I placed that note of my mom in one of the, I don't know, specs or specs book of, of guns or was it the Bible? I'm not even sure if it was Frank who saw it, but a fellow theologian borrowed the, the book or the Bible and he saw the note clipped on it. And so he asked if I could, if I could give permission to put it in the wind hoover. And as uh, I was praying over the retreat, I realized that parang, this is also God's loving admon loving admonition for me today and let me read that note of mommy and i quote in all of my years more than anyone else i expect a priest to give a human face to every suffering the first one to realize that what ultimately joins all of humanity together is not the privileged comfort of wealth and abundance, but the humbling suffering shared in common to all. In the maze of materialistic and worldly pursuits, I expect him to stand tall and unshaken, even when he is sadly besieged on all sides by lawlessness and opportunism. I expect him not to curse the darkness, but to be the, but to be the first to light his candle to blaze in the brightness of a thousand suns. Will this be too much to ask? And above all, expect a priest to be the one who can readily tell the difference between his needs and his greed. One who will never become too rich that he would have nothing anymore to receive, nor too poor that he would have nothing more to give. I expect him to be there, someone who will be able to walk with kings, yet not lose the common touch. Will this be too much to expect? As I said earlier, I do not expect you to be so inspired with what I have just said and described as the image of what I envision a priest to be. But that is the image. The true image of love that gives meaning to the word sacrifice in the Christian tradition. That would be the image in my mind and heart, the image I would nurture of you. Uh, 
an image that I would build on hopes and prayers. A priest who is not who is just a man, but never to be just an ordinary man. This is the meaning of your vocation. This will be the meaning of your life. Go forth and set your eyes and energies on this gigantic task of becoming what you should be. A gentle reminder for me today, and add to that Oji's prayer and admonition to me too. After 21 years in the society and 10 years of priestly ministry, last night as I was praying, I was saying, I'm trying, ma. Trying. I stumbled along the way, too many falls to count, still too many falls to brace for. But I'll, I'll keep trying. With every cut of the world's woundedness, with every beat of humanity's fearfulness, with every snob of humanity's unfaithfulness, I promise I'll keep trying. And hopefully with God's grace, I'll get there. Because you believed. Because I am certain he will see me through. I am certain God will carry us through. I humbly ask that you continue to pray for me, for all of us Jesuits, especially in such a troubling time today, that we may be faithful and true. That we may be faithful and true. Thank you to all of you. God bless and peace. Keep safe. Keep healthy. Join me as we offer a prayer to our Blessed Mother to continue to always keep us in the loving protection of her mercy. Thank you, Father I.J., for your leadership in the province and in the community and for the many other important contributions you've made to the province and to the university.
So congratulations, and uh, we promise our support. To you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May I ask my consecrated grand priest to also join me. May God who desired you to be his children and to be holy as he himself is holy, enable you to be in the world images of his splendor and signs of his glory. Amen. Amen. May God who sanctified the human race through the incarnation of his son and gave it new life through his death and resurrection, make you artisans of his kingdom of justice and peace. Amen. Amen. May God who consecrated you in truth with a protecting grace of the Holy Spirit, grant that following the example of all the saints of the Society of Jesus, you may be a living sacrifice in Christ for the salvation of the world. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down in you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in the peace and joy of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We ask Thank you.